gonna start with questions, Craig, just so you know that. So, <laughs> but you can call on whoever you want to to talk, or I can do that if you want me to. Either way, all right, Chip, you're first. Go ahead. Talk about that um, the preseason trip. How much that helped the team? Not only players getting to know each other, but the coaches getting to know the players better, and vice versa. Yeah, you know, we have so many different new players, and then obviously have an, um, all new assistant coaches. It was a really, really rewarding trip for us um, for a lot of different reasons. I know a lot of times when you take the trip, people won't concentrate a lot on the basketball part of it. But for us, it was really learning about each other, uh, getting my coaches getting a chance to see me, and uh, I'm taking feedback from those guys as, as we go through the games. And, you know, our guys learning each other. You know, when you look at who we have, we got so many guys that transferred in. and. Uh, the three guys that played the most last year was um, Tequavion, Casey, and EB. Everybody else, even the ones who are returning, are new. So just you know, you know, having a chance to um, find out a little bit more about each other, uh, understanding how we want to play, it was good for us because we were able to get at least uh, ten practices in, and I think that was important, especially with a new team. And you know, I vote um, to have um, take these trips every year. Uh, if anybody else is part of the NCAA, that would be a good thing, especially the way transfers goes now. You know, you don't know what your roster is going to look like from year to year, and I think it was good for us to get a little advantage and we kind of learning each other. You've always liked a hybrid forward. How does Jack Carter <clears throat> do that role? Jack, was, Jack did a great job in Bahamas, and he's been one of those guys, um, and you're right, you know, it's the new breed of um, forward. You know, Jack will play some small forward for us, but um, I guess you could say small ball, but he's not really small because he's 6'8", six, 6'9", six, and so we will play him at some um, face-up power forward. Uh, I like him as a Torin Dorn type of guy, uh, but a little bit better shooter. And you know, Torin Dorn was really special for us my first year. Could drive it, he could shoot it, he could guard multiple positions, but we'll use Jack in, the, in that way. Earlier this summer, you mentioned Sir Quavion had no choice to step up and become a leader. Obviously, there's you know, good thing you've got some veteran players this year, but how is he taking a step in? He's done a good job. You know, he's um, he's always been our most, um, he always brings the most energy to our team, and he's still that way. You know, what I love about the kid, one of the reasons, obviously, that he wanted to come back to school, obviously wanted to play his way into a higher pick next year, but he loves school. He loves teammates. He loves if you guys have ever seen him at the football games, he's jumping up and down and he loves to tailgate. He loves everything about NC State. And so his leadership is because he cares about everybody that's around him. And he's done a great job embracing that. Uh, he's done a great job as the guy who's a leading score returning, embracing the new guys that are coming in also. Is he, would you consider him your foremost leader or are there other players, even new players who maybe are a little older and have stepped into that role? Yeah, I would say, Luke, I would say that probably if you made me pick a guy who, who's going to be our main leader this year, I would say it's probably going to be Jaquel Joyner. Um, I think Tequavion will lead in several different ways as he plays and he will certainly have a voice. But if you made me pick a guy right now, I would say it probably would be Jaquel. You know, he's older. You know, he's the point guard on the team. He's been through it a little bit, um, and I think he's stepped up so far. And it's hard for transfers to come into any program because they're still trying to figure out their way out, and can they say this and can they say that? And I think he's been one of those guys that's found his niche and people listen to him. How's the chemistry between Jarkel and Kikwebi on the backboard? It's good. You know, a lot of times um, um, I haven't played them together a lot. Uh, because they're both so, so competitive. So I kind of want them on the other team so they both can lift the other team up. Uh, but the times that they played together in Bahamas when they were on the floor together, they seemed to work well. You know, we got enough shots at this program to go around, so I don't think that's ever going to be an issue. From a number standpoint, you see Casey Marcel and Breon Pass playing multiple roles, you know, different positions. Yeah, I, I think you're going to see Casey Morsell, who um, will play some small shooting guard and small forward. I think you'll see Breon as a point at times and then off the ball at times. But, you know, I, I look at Casey as a guy who could possibly want, be one of the top defenders in our league. He's strong, he's physical. Um, he's also shooting the ball very well. And I think Breon Pass, we saw just a little bit of what he can do last year. And I think you'll see more of him because he'll have opportunities. So you'll see at times him with Tequavion and times he's with Jarkel on the floor and even with Casey. 
you, you've been around a lot of winning teams and championship teams. How tough personally was last year for you, and what changes did that bring about? Well, Chip, you know I'm a competitor, and mm -hmm. um, you know I think every coach in the country pours his um, all his energy and time and effort into the job that they do, and you certainly want to be rewarded at the end. And for me, it was tough. Um, I, you know, I would be lying to you if I didn't tell you it was one of the toughest season, if not the toughest season that I've ever been through in basketball. Uh, very humbling season for season for me. And you know, as a head coach here at NC State, no matter what the situation was, I take full responsibility of the season that we had. And it's my job to go out and try to correct it. And I think we've done some great things in identifying some of the issues that we had last year. And we've done it through recruiting and bringing the right guys in. Has that, has that energized you? Yeah, you know, I, I don't need um, sometimes I don't, I'm, I'm energized all the time. And, you know, I just I'm excited, just excited about this year as I was going into last year. And I don't need a losing season to get me that way. But certainly it helps. Um, you know, I wouldn't lie about that part of it. But, you know, I'm I'm as focused. Uh, my attitude has been great. You know, I'm pushing I've got great people around me that I listen to that are you know helping and a lot of times when you go through a season like that sometimes you you want to turn your back and look at just you and you know I try to surround myself with some folks with players and coaches that certainly want to you know obviously get back on the right track and I think that's important. How are the new assistant coaches doing and how long did it take working with them to sort of become your new normal? Yeah, you know, they're doing great. You know, I think all three of those guys are fabulous. And, um, you know, one thing I wanted is I wanted to go out and get three guys with tremendous energy. Uh, also, three guys that I felt that won't be here long. And I know people don't like to hear that. But, you know, in order to you get a great staff, you know, you want guys who can be head coaches. And when you look at when I first started, we had A.W. Hamilton and Takeo Siddle. And both of those guys are really doing a good job as Division One head coaches. Um, I love our staff. I, I love our chemistry. They're working well together. Um, they're bringing tremendously, um, tremendous ideas to the table. That's nothing against our, our an old staff. I thought our old staff did some really good things also, the old assistant coaches. But it's good to have some different ideas um, as we go through this process. With the new staff, uh, a roster overturned, especially not having to enter a season where you have the NCAA and wondering where that's going on, does it feel like Almost a fresh start, just a clean slate. Yeah, I, it, it's that's a great question. This is the first year that we're going into a year without having that over our head. And I know a lot of people, it's, it's weird because uh, a lot of people look at it that we didn't get hit with postseason play and they just kind of figured it didn't matter to us or it didn't hurt our program. Man, but for five years, it's been a real tough struggle. I feel for those who are still going through it, uh, we're blessed that we have moved past it. Um, other than the last thing we have is a scholarship reduction. Uh, but it's good not to have that. Um, that. That bothered us, that hurt us through recruiting over the years, and a lot of it was negative recruiting. Uh, but now people don't have that, and we can certainly move on without that, you know, uh, hanging over our head. That was a big cloud. What's the current health status on Greg Gant and uh, Ernest Ross? So both are, both are um, full-fledged going, both are full-fledged practicing, um, both are healthy right now. And you, you're sitting on some wood, so I want you everybody to do this rock on wood. Rock on wood. But both, both guys are doing great. Both guys are, you know, I wouldn't tell you that, I wouldn't say that they're in great shape right now, you know, but both guys have been in practice full-time and both are doing a good job for us. What are the questions you had about your, your front court coming into this season? Have, have they been answered? <clears throat> yeah, you know, I, we went out and we got veteran guys. Um, you, know, you know, you look at the stats and, man, DJ Burns' stats are so incredible. Um, you know, for 20 minutes of play to average 15 points a game and, and obviously to be the player of the year in the Big South. And then uh, Dushan Mahorshik has been around for a long time and he's done a great job at every stop and he's a really good basketball player. And then let's not forget the experience that E.B. Dewana was able to, to get last year by playing and being thrown into the fire. Both him and Jalen Gibson were guys who I didn't think were going to be able to touch the floor until their junior year, and all of a sudden he had to play. And then you had Ernest, and then you had Greg. Um, there was a lot of pieces that we just did not have. And so I like the fact that we have great competition. My teams have always done well when I have 10 or 11 guys or 12 guys, and practice is so good, and 
they're so competitive where the games become a little bit easier. Can you more talk about DJ Burns' minutes? What can you do to get him to X amount of minutes? What is your goal for him from a conditioning standpoint, from a not getting into foul trouble standpoint, to get him on the court as much as humanly possible? Well, I told him if he if he gets in great shape, he'll play 40 minutes a game. So <laughs> he should be excited about that. No, he, he's working extremely hard. He is. Um, he may be, and I don't have the stats, he may have been the most efficient um, post player or maybe even the player in college basketball last year. And he's working hard to get in great shape. And great shape is different for everybody. It comes down to what's great shape for him. And um, he certainly is effective. Uh, one of the things that I've learned over the last you know month or so is that he's very he's a very underrated passer too. Um, you know, and he's a willing passer. He can score the ball, but he's willing to make the right play. The difference is, do you see with the big man working with the six eight Levi Watkins? Uh, I think it's good. I mean, you know, Levi can get out there and mix it up a little bit. I'm not saying he's in Levi Watkins shape from back in the day, but um, he'll give him a good hard two minutes and get after a little mm -hmm. bit and. Um, but these guys are different now. They're bigger, they're stronger, they're faster and everything else. But I'm so excited to have Levi, um, you know, on our staff, you know, to get a former player who's been through it, who's won. And then also you, you look at Kareem's track record of being a head coach and, you know, um, Joel, the same thing. Joel's come from great programs. And I think those guys are going to bring a lot to our program. The way things are now, which is more intense and you know, and time consuming, with recruiting high school kids like it used to be, or now recruiting the transfer portal? Everything, Chip. For new guys. Everything, Chip. Um, it's, uh, I know a lot of you guys have you've covered me um, since I've been here, and I'm going into year six. Whatever you covered the first, second, third, fourth, or fifth year, scratch it, it's different. Um, you know, it's uh, when you talk about um, transfers and, you know, immediate eligibility, and, you know, you throw in NIL. The recruitment has completely changed from what it what it used to be, and so all of them become a challenge. It's um, a 365 um, you know, seven days a week, and you know I'm recruiting, and and I don't I don't say that because I'm, I'm disappointed about it. You know you have to adjust to whatever the environment is at the time, and I'm certainly a guy who loves to recruit anyway, and so uh, we've had to make adjustments to everything. Along those lines, how difficult was it to try? to use every scholarship this offseason? You mean this past year? Yeah. To get to the 12 we yeah. have? How difficult was it? Yeah. yeah. Not difficult. I wanted 12. I needed 14. <laughs> I wanted 15 or 16. Um, you know, but like I said, I, you know, JC, one of the things that, you know, and people don't understand over the last couple of years is that when you're down a scholarship and everybody said, man, it's just a scholarship that doesn't mean anything. That's not right. You're down a scholarship, and then you get a couple guys injured. We went through this thing called COVID, and some guys were out for a little bit. And so all of a sudden, when you got 12, then you may be down to eight or nine scholarship guys, and it's hard to practice. It's hard to compete. At one point last year, I became one of the best four and four guys in the country. We were trying to practice with some guys, and that was just something. That was another thing that – I've never had to do in my life because we, we would have more players than less. And for the first time I was faced with that. And so certainly I wanted, if I could get as many guys as we can, you know, in a NC State uniform to practice, I think it helps. And then obviously as you got down to those eight or nine guys that would practice, you were trying to figure out now how to wear them down so you really couldn't get chemistry because you couldn't go as hard as you wanted to. And along those lines, how talented are your walk-ons this year? Well, man, I got a, I got one parent that's just crushing me, um, and her name is um, Georgette. She's uh, crushing me. Uh, you know, it's. I tell you one thing. It's it's hard, really hard. My, my son and I got a tremendous relationship, and um, my wife and I, man, we're strong. And 22 years of marriage, but it's the first time now when she's got a chance to be a parent, and she's gonna talk trash to me about her son, which is different. You know, I don't know what she's gonna say when, um, you know. If I yell at KJ and he comes home and say, hey, daddy just yell. Oh, will he say daddy? He may say coach, I don't know, but he just yelled at me. So it's different. I'm having fun, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Um, you know, just having my son around me and being able to see him every day, and man, that means a lot. And I'm excited that he's with us. And we had a choice as a, a family to whether he was gonna come to NC State and be a part of our team or whether we're going to send him to prep school, he missed his 
first year with a torn labrum, and then he went through, um, you know, the COVID years, and you know, the decision was it was really on him, and he loved our team, and he loved being around our team, and we decided to get there. So, I think our work walk ons are going to help. Um, I know I can't get rid of one of them. I know that. So. <laughs> When you were talking about last year being humbling and it's a difficult experience, some of that's beyond your control is like Manny in the first minute. And then there are things probably you look back and you say, maybe I could have done this differently or whatever. Kind of how do you balance that part of some, is sometimes things go wrong and then some of it's what can you do better, I guess, when you reflect it on yourself. Yeah, and you know what I did after a while, and I'm the toughest um, on myself than anybody. I, I go back after the season and I spend you know, two or three weeks and listen to everything and think back and replay and watch a lot of film. You know, after I got to that stage, you know, I stopped having, um, I, I decided, you know what, I'm gonna turn the page and I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna recruit as hard as I can. I'm gonna address the needs that I think that we need to have. And, um, you know, Manny was a, it was a tough loss for us because we thought we were gonna have a veteran guy. And then we never thought that we wouldn't have Greg Gann. And then Ernest Ross went through his deal. And so all of that being said, is there a couple things I could have done better from a, a coaching standpoint? Possibly, um, but we just, I didn't think we had the pieces. And um, you know, a lot of times we were trying to survive and stay in a lot of those games just because we didn't. But at the end of the day, uh, I hope and trust um, my instincts and my instincts is were to try to go out and fix some of those issues. Um, nobody takes the blame more than me, um, you know, no matter how it looks. Um, you know, I take it on the chin and I don't try to, you know, put it on anybody. Uh, I thought the kids were fabulous. They gave me everything that they could ever give me and it's up to me to um, fix it. First losing season ever in my career and that was tough and I didn't like it. And so I had to make some adjustments. Big, big picture. Yeah. It feels like sometimes the rules kind of get changed midstream. You know, like they're moving the goalposts on you. Transfers could be eligible. Transfers are not enough, you know, supposed to be ineligible. You know, can't do it, what, two times in four years, and yet then everybody gets a waiver. <laughs> do you kind of sometimes look at, you know, how they use official visits rules and how they use the transfer rules and be like, okay, how are we supposed to build a roster at times when we don't know if they're even going to be eligible, and then all of a sudden they get a waiver like three, four months later? Yeah, you know, I, I think, and I, 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 hope, I probably speak for a lot of coaches, not everyone, but if you, if you can't adapt to what's going on right now, it's probably time for you to look at a different career because it has completely changed. The way you guys have to cover has changed. Um, it's completely different. I wish I had, you know, we have this, um, you know, 28 visits in two years uh, with the ability to bring young kids on a visit and with the ability for so many guys to transfer. I wish we would go to and look at saying, hey, there should be unlimited visits. You use it as you may. Um, the other thing I would love to see at, at some point is that you know we get three coaches um, that can go off the road, three assistant coaches and myself that can go and recruit. I wish we get to the point where you got a staff, you send anybody out that you want to. Um, you know, and I do think we will get to some of those rules at this point. I don't know that they're there right now, um, but it becomes a challenge because. You have to figure out, all right, who do you bring in and do you have a chance to get those guys right away or are you wasting visits doing those things? And it's a good mixture. And, you know, we have a unique place here. I love NC State, but we also have to find guys who fit what we're trying to do and fit the culture of the school. And so it's a complete balance in that. With the 28 visits, I'm guessing that rule was created before juniors were allowed to visit and before you might have to use eight to 10 official visits for the portal. I don't know if it was created before the juniors, but it was definitely created before guys can transfer and not play right away. Yeah. Can you elaborate on uh, the changes that you said that you had to make with yourself coming off your first losing season? Like anything specific that you can, you can share with us? Yeah, I don't, I don't think it was anything that I would say that I just, I go back and if, if we would have won every game we played last year, I would have done the same thing. Um, but when you lose, and I don't know if you've been through any of that stuff in your life or you have something that you didn't like, you go back and you look at it a little bit more. And I don't think it, I don't think I can point to one thing, 
but it was a lot of things that I said, hey, you know what? Maybe I could have done this. Maybe I could have bought a little bit more energy. And I'm an energy guy, so for me to say that, that's tough. But at the end of the thing, I don't think it's any one thing. I just look at the entire – my job as a CEO, CEO of um, NC State Basketball is to look at the entire program and see where I can help. You know, obviously, you know, make sure that our kids are in the best situation that they can be in. And that's what we've done. One of the biggest things is identifying and getting more players and obviously helping them have a little bit more depth at each position. I think that was better for me. But nothing specifically when it comes to your coaching tactics? No, I, I mean, you know, coaches are creatures of habit. Um, yeah, could I have switched defense? Could I have ran another play? 100%. Um, but we're creatures of habit. We can get better at what our system is. And obviously, I always go back in our system and say, can I figure out how to make our system better, tweak it a little bit? Yeah. One of the biggest things you learned in the Bahamas, just from a basketball standpoint, with all these new players that you're trying to get to play together? You know, I, I learned that our veteran guys um, can help us. You know, I, I've said this a long time in, in the ACC, and I got caught with it last year. I said it's, it's really hard to win with a lot of freshmen and sophomores. And when you look back at our last year's team, our, all of our guards, all of them, all four that we played were freshmen and sophomores. And I, you know, it was, it was good because we've been able not to skip steps, but we've been able to accelerate a lot of the stuff that we would do because we have some older guys who have been in college, um, you know, been away from home a little bit. They've been coached by some really good coaches. And I just seeing those guys, veteran guys now, we had all three, we had three of the four because um, Dusan didn't make the trip. But just seeing those guys and see adding those guys and, you know, being able to see where they can bring value and, you know, just, uh, you know, last year we really struggled because of our young post and we didn't, it was so much pressure on to Quavion Smith and so much pressure on Darion Sebron to be able to score from outside because we didn't have, you know, couldn't get easy baskets because our bigs were so young and, ex and experienced. But now when you go to practice, you can throw the ball in and those guys can make plays. They can make plays for themselves or they can find other guy. So that gives us a, a added dimension that we didn't have. So to go back to the original question, just to have the veterans mix in with the young guys, just see our guys having fun. And I think that was the biggest thing for me. How has it uh, been shaking off the rust with LJ Thomas? Say that again. How have you kind of helped shake off the rust? LJ Thomas. Well, I think LJ is going to be fine. You know, even though he didn't play last year, he was one of those guys that worked out all the time. And he, he's like every freshman. He's a sponge. He's picking up on stuff. He's getting better in a lot of areas. He's another guy that I like that can play multiple positions. So we'll see him play some one and two this year. I was just going to ask you about the defensive part. Obviously, with Manny went out, you lost some time. Uh, what, What's your outlook as far as uh, this team being uh, able to defend better than the group last year? Well, it was different. We had the leading shot block in the country that we thought was coming back. And so our philosophies and how we try to guard the ball was a little bit different because in the past we could really pressure. And even when we flush guards to the hole, you know, Manny was back there to clean it up. So I think, you know, so you guys know, I think I'm gonna play 100% zone this year. Um, I've been looking at a lot of tape of Syracuse. And um, if you're gonna play a zone, I think it's gonna be, you know, Coach Bayheim has got a tremendous zone. So I think I'm gonna play a lot of zone this year. Write that down. <laughs> you don't believe me, but write that down. They play a pretty good zone. Yeah. They do play a pretty good zone. And I'm not saying that our zone is gonna be as good as theirs, but we're gonna. You've always been good at kind of projecting the ACC. Yes. What are your thoughts on the ACC this year? I'm, I'm not good at it this year because it's so many different, um, you know, different. Do you need rosters? I do need rosters. <laughs> like when we when I go to ACC Media Day, I'm hoping they bring two guys that I know. So <laughs> each team, so I can introduce them. So, and I, you know, because you don't know. You don't, you don't know. And, and, that, and I'm not saying it's just not our, not the ACC. It's everywhere. Um, you know, it, and that's the way, that's the norm. You know, a lot of people will get mad when you say it's going to be hard to get guys who start at a school as a freshman and actually graduate. 
it's even harder when you're at the power five level because they're either going to be going to be a pro or they're going to even transfer if they don't play a lot. So mm -hmm. it's tough. Just to get a, a four-year guy now, it's really tough. And I may have had my last four-year guy with Jericho. Uh, that may be my last four-year guy. I don't know that. Uh, I hope that's not the case, but there is a big possibility that it, that, that, that will be the case. Can NIL change that? Say that again. Can NIL change? That? I think so. I mean, you know, I think everybody, Chip, everybody's situation is different. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's you know, Darion C. Ron's situation is different than uh, to Quavion, and that and that's a lot comes down to you know whether a kid really loves academics and wants to be in school. You know, we never know what their family situation is or what pressure they have from back home, and so I think it's different. I, I, it would be unfair to say because one guy may look at it one different than the other guy. We good? Andy, listen, he was red. Is that red or is that maroon? I'm just trying to it's red. Okay, yeah. I respect that. Thank you, guys. Listen, I appreciate all you guys, and um, we're excited. Nobody asked me this, but I am excited about practice on Monday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I am very excited about practice on Monday and thank you all for all you do and I don't take it for granted and listen, this is why I wanted this to be in person. We hadn't been like this in a while, so hope everything works out good. So practice is open on Monday? Practice is not open. On Monday. <laughs> practice may be open to one segment of guys on Monday and that may be the NBA scouts, but not, not you guys. Not, not me. Right. Well, no, that, don't don't talk like that. <laughs> don't say that. You want to uh, talk to Craig because Craig will get mad. He left out of here and he's gonna want to know what I told y'all. Promise y'all. Yeah, when you he's, gonna, hey, he's gonna want to know what I promised. There he is. <laughs> <laughs>